most people want to love, but are absolutely terrified That's it. of love. Why are we trying to find all the ways that we can't trust love when we say it's the thing that we really want? It's the culture, mm. monkey see, monkey do. It's yeah. the songs, it's the movies, it's the books. Well, if you're constantly around all that stuff, it's gonna be your reality with relationships too. And a lot of us, unfortunately, didn't have good role modeling from our parents. If you can just see it as trust that nobody did anything wrong. You yeah. didn't do anything wrong, they didn't do anything wrong. It was exactly what your soul needed and their soul needed to yeah. grow. If you can just hold that frame, you're just liberated from so much. Hello and welcome back to the Raw, Real and Vulnerable podcast with me, your host, Beck Antonucci. What really is the purpose for relationships? Is it actually to get us into deeper alignment with ourselves, with our soul? Is it so that we can actually taste freedom and liberate ourselves from our wounded ego? Why is it that so many of us really deeply desire, ache for, long for love, but are equally so terrified of it. Great questions, right? Wish I had all the answers. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, Rebecca, you don't know anything. <laughs> uh, honestly, I love the place that I'm in and the women in my community, the place that you're all in. I feel a lot of us can resonate with exactly that, desiring love, wanting love, longing love, but also being really terrified of it. And I know I shared a podcast episode with you all about my dating experience in Austin and being able to so beautifully open my heart to love. And it felt like it was the first time in 11 years where I was excited about a man, willing to put all my walls down and surrender to a man. It felt so good for me to experience myself that way. Now that I'm leaving, I was thinking about all the people that I want to thank and send love notes to as I'm in the airport for the way that those people have impacted my time in Austin. I thought, oh, I want to send a voice memo to that particular man because, God, it just felt so good to have that experience. And he co-created that with me. And I desire every woman to be able to have that experience because I know that there is a part of you that's longing and aching and wishing and desiring for it. There may be a part of you that is a little bit scared of it. But what does Preston always say? What imprisons us also points to our freedom. And so in today's episode with Kevin Crenshaw, the love guy, he is a new friend in Austin, Texas, and he loves love. And I love how he speaks about love. I ask every guest before we record, before we go live, what's hot on your heart to talk about? And he was like, I love love. I'm like, great, let's go there. What is really standing out to me is women wanting love, but attempting to build love on a foundation of resentment towards men hands up have you ever been mad at men if both of my hands are up in this right now moment maybe by the time this launches in September who knows baby you're coming for me I'm ready <laughs> but I have had to clear the resentment first to be ready and available for partnership because for so long I was mad with men and once I stopped being mad with men I then had to stop being mad with myself and I truly believe once I cleared both of those resentments that's when I actually truly became ready for partnership. And I know a lot of you know that I have been having an incredible dating experience in Austin, Texas, just being treated really beautifully by men who are attempting to court me. And I do believe it is the clearing of the resentment towards men and myself that has created space for this availability within me and readiness within me to be online now. So if you're a woman who is deeply desiring to dive into opening her heart to love and being excited, genuinely looking forward to love and loving someone again and being loved by someone again, this episode is for you. If you love this episode, please screenshot it, share it to your story, tag both myself and Kevin because we would love to connect with you and we would love to share it as well. Strap yourself in. This is one hell of an episode. Let's fucking go. I'm sitting here in person in Austin, Texas with that heart guy. The heart guy. The heart guy. One and only. The one and only. <laughs> <laughs> recommended, referred to me by an incredible friend of mine, which makes you an incredible friend of mine. Mm. Kevin Crenshaw, welcome to Raw, Real and Vulnerable. Like literally today was like, hey, want to jump on my podcast at like 3.30? Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, we'll put in the show notes, Nick. <laughs> put us in a group chat and said, you guys would really connect well. And so I said, I'm recording today. And I've actually been crying all morning about leaving Austin, Texas. So I thought if I could get some support, <laughs> I'd have someone that wants to actually talk to me about love and relationships. Let's do that instead. Let's do it. I love talking about love. So here um, we are. Me too. So the first question I always ask is who is Kevin Crenshaw and what is it that you do in the world? Love that question. Yeah. Kevin Crenshaw is this personality that I have created in my mind of a guy who's very charismatic who loves love, who loves to play and do things big. Mm. He's an artist. I don't know. I'm getting to know him every day. Love it. You actually, <laughs> some people just bypass the who and go straight to what they do. So I love it when someone is, you know what, you've asked who I am. Let's go. There. Yeah. Yeah. I'm getting to know me more and more every day and it's beautiful. I love it. And what is it that you do in the world? Other than have fun and love style and talking to friends and all the things. I'm a DJ, so that's fun. I used to be a group fitness instructor. So yes. I get to still facilitate energy in a room yeah. just as a DJ now. But we're here to talk about relationship stuff because I'm a relationship coach. So I okay. help people with healing relational trauma from their past. Yes. That's blocking them from the intimacy they want right now. I'm mm -hmm. a romantic at heart I, and I'm just owning it. It's yeah. just who I am. It's how I've viewed the world ever since I was a little kid. Yeah. And you could call it programming or something. I'm a Pisces. It's just a part of me. Yeah. And um, I don't really know why, but I do enjoy talking about relationships yeah. and talking about dynamics and, and really through the lens of how can I support bringing people together. Yes. There's a lot of stuff on Instagram about are they right for you, you or not or set your standards or when to walk away and like all these yes. things. And that's important to an extent. Yes. But there's not enough on how do you actually build a relationship with another imperfect human because yeah. you're imperfect too. Like we, we're all going to mess up. I enjoy that conversation and it's really fun. Yeah, I love that. Specifically, exactly what you just said. I had a client yesterday who was crying. She was like, I'm an imperfect human going through all of my traumas and I have to meet this other imperfect human and he's going through his traumas. <laughs> and also because I'm in the world of personal development, she's I'm not meeting men like the men that you meet speak. And she's like, where am I going to meet this imperfect human that's just that we're going to come together and it's going to work and we're going to stay together and we're going to accept each other and our flaws and our imperfections. And what do you have to say about that? I see you laughing. I've, I'm, <laughs> because... <laughs> There's so many people are asking that and yes. it's the wrong question. You're saying, where am I going to meet them? It's not a game of hide and seek. Yes. It's a game of quantum physics. Yes. Instead of where am I going to meet them? When's it going to happen? Which is what the brain goes to. Yeah. It's what within me isn't a match for it yet. Yeah. Which is hard pill to swallow if you've yeah. been doing a lot of work and you think you've arrived somewhere. Yeah. The joke's on you. Yeah. If it's not in your life, you're not a match for it yet. And I'm a very firm believer in that. That we're always manifesting exactly what we're a match for. And relationships are the best spiritual dojo to do inner work. Yes. And if we can see it as that, then what's in your life now or not in your life now or even in your past, yeah. you can see that as your curriculum for your soul's evolution. It becomes a completely different game. Then you're seeing it as, oh, okay, cool. I get to like work more on myself or work more on my beliefs of myself or of men or of intimacy or my subconscious association mm. to being close to another person mm. emotionally. There's so much there. And yeah, you don't have to be healed either to manifest the person. It's some cosmic joke that God's like, when you're at this space, then bam, you're going to meet them and then it's just going to accelerate if you see it all as the game that it is. And when you have women that come to you and ask questions like this, how do you support them to not wrong themselves or make themselves bad because I could imagine a woman could be listening and be like oh great I haven't done fucking enough work for him to be here and I'm not the vibrational match to I the get man. it they're like I've put in enough work when's he gonna put in work he yeah. needs to put in work men need to do the work yeah. and I, I get it there's a lot of, of stuff there and I think I'll say Alison Armstrong has a really great viewpoint of this you know who she is yes and that is the unconscious ways that women sabotage relationships by mm -hmm. trying to evoke the best in men and they're actually evoking the worst in them. Mm. And her whole work is on the basis of men are responding to women. Yes. But if you don't see it as that, that you'll point the finger and blame and why aren't you not meeting me here and da yeah. da because you're expecting a man to be a woman. Yes. That's And he's just a woman misbehaving. Yes instead of a completely different species that operates different than a woman does. Can you give us some context for how we would do that? Yeah. 
the common example is like taking out the trash type thing. Like you yeah. ask him to take out the trash and he doesn't. And then all of a sudden you get mad and pissed because, hey, it's been 30 minutes. And I asked you to take out the trash. You yeah. said yes and you haven't. What's going on in your head is he doesn't care about me. He's not showing up. What does this say about us? Yes. He said yes to taking out the trash. You didn't talk about when. Men have a very singular focus. So if it was in passing, he's just saying yes so that you don't get your feelings hurt because he's not going to be like, I'm not paying attention to you right mm -hmm. now. It's a small example, but it's a lot of ways women emasculate men. And it's essentially because biologically women can't overpower most men and women have a very innate fear of men. And that's important to have. It's a natural yeah. response in a sim similar way that your inner critic doesn't motivate you to be better. Cutting down a man doesn't make him better. Yes. Most men are very aware of their flaws. And if they're not, they're just really scared to look at them. Yeah. And constantly pointing them out, looking for them to be the perfect safe person yeah. all the time is giving your power away, number one, and it's setting an unrealistic expectation for him. And there's not enough celebration and acknowledgement for most couples in the culture of their relationship. Yeah. And it's more of taking it from the defense of, I don't want you to hurt me. Yes. or don't step on me like the wrong way or it, again it's the over analyzation of is this right should i leave like you're on defense constantly and you can't score on defense and it's that consciousness is from something that happened in your past could be with a parent could be with an ex where you abandoned yourself and thought you had to be something different in order to be loved mm -hmm. that same consciousness is created in you but it's also put on somebody else where you're not able to accept who they are and you're constantly looking for the red flags when everybody's got red flags yeah why do you think we do this? Because I know you say that you love. I do, yeah. But I would say, and I know this is a big generalization, most people want to love, but are absolutely fucking terrified. That's it. Of love. When we want to love love, but we're terrified of love, and then this great person comes in and he's done nine things right, air quotes right, one thing wrong, air quotes wrong, and we point it out. Mm -hmm. Why are we trying to find all the ways that we can't trust love when we say it's the thing that we really want? It's the culture, mm. monkey see, monkey do. It's yeah. the songs, it's the movies, it's the books. Oh, he hurt her and he's the bad guy because he cheated and da-da. Well, if you're constantly around all that stuff, it's going to be your reality with relationships too. And a lot of us, unfortunately, didn't have good role modeling from our parents either. So there's also that. It's like we're looking for something we don't even know what it is, which I love that because that's the human spirit to seek it out. Mm -hmm. I really believe that not a lot of people have experienced true love yet the courage of the human heart is continuously seeking it out. And I love it because, again, I see it all as the game that it is for spiritual development. Mm -hmm. To me, it's like football. Like for a lot of guys, they like watching football. They got their favorite teams and like the players and the, the rules of the game and all the things. To me, relationships is like the same thing. Really? Tell me how. Seeing how people evolve and how they dance together and yeah. how every relationship is so unique because every human is so unique. Yeah. They have a different history and a different past. They have different agreements and a different way they do their relationship. It's so fascinating to me. And that's what is, sparks my curiosity. I love variety. So yeah. it, it stimulates that for me. And are you talking about your own relationships or working with people Both. in relationships? All. Both. My wow. own and others. On my, my podcast, I interview couples yeah. when I ask them about their story and and sharing wisdom and stuff and every single one of them broke up or got close to breaking up or had got cheated on or whatever it is and had some massive repair they're the inspirations wow. of wow that's the type of relationship i want yeah like, whoa so that i'm like doing my own research in that way finding the commonalities and just how vastly different it is and there's no rules yes to relationship yeah so talking about these amazing couples that have been incredibly battle tested, mm -hmm. gone through huge repair, and now you look at as inspiring relationships. I know out in the lobby, we were talking about navigating resentment. I know that I have a primarily female based audience and you have a female community as well. Mm -hmm. And I feel women in my world have been really hurt by love. And I know we were just talking about men have a bad rap in society of like men are bad, men are cheats, men are liars, men are fill in the blank. Even I told you I was living in Bali, there's all these pages about, are you dating this man? Are you dating that man? My girlfriends had subscribed to it. I was like, why would you have that in your subconscious that the kind of man that you would date would need to be posted on a Facebook page? And so when women have been so hurt by love, but they want love and there's this underlying resentment that exists, how do we clear that so we're not projecting resentment at men? It's first acknowledging that you're right, that some men don't deserve to be trusted, that some men aren't safe. Mm. So this isn't 
changing because you have, have labeled all men as unsafe or you have this thing about all men yes. and, and you're resentful towards men, it's not going to swing the pendulum in the other direction and you're going to be openly trusting, fall victim to something. That's important to note. What a lot of the culture is, isn't okay. What a lot of men are, isn't okay. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest things that pisses me off more than anything in the world is men in personal development and healing spaces that aren't fucking safe, mm -hmm. that masquerade as being safe. That royally boils my blood. Yes. That's why I help women a lot with their intuition and discernment is to be able to notice that. But clearing resentment is, is important for you to get what you want. Being angry at men, it might be justified based on your past or what's happened. And I forgot who said this, it was a roomie or something. It's like drinking poison, expecting the other person to get hurt. It, you're the one living in the pain. Mm -hmm. It may not have been your fault, but it's your responsibility to shift and evolve. And again, if you see it as the curriculum that it is, yes. you've been given this anger. How can you dance with it? How can you wield it in a way that brings you closer to love and not further from it? Yes. And so then your medicine, so to speak, isn't ayahuasca, it's resentment. Yes. And can you take that in, fully allow it to process through you mm -hmm. to be transformed by the renewal of your spirit of your mind, of your heart, mm -hmm. to be made into a new person so that you are able to ha be more in your power, so that you're able to have more discernment, you're able to be closer to your own intuition. And it's ironic because the closer you are to real love, the more unfuckwithable you are. Mm. But when you're caught up in like codependent love or these other flavors of love that we think is love, as you, you talked about, you can become very susceptible to manipulation. If I want something so bad, I'll do anything. Yes. You could be manipulated easily. When I am love and nobody can take that from me, and I love sharing that with you, why would I need to do something to get what I already have? It's a completely different mind frame. But again, fully embodied, knowing that you are love, and you get to share that and amplify that with another human mm. versus needing it from another human, which I, I mentioned codependency, but that's just one of many flavors of how that could play out. And hard for us as young women who are raised on Disney princesses and yep. rom-coms. Uh, yep. She always falls in love with Prince Charming and she always lives happily ever after and he saves the day. And, and we're the funny all... part about that is happily ever after is the beginning of the story. They get married. Yeah. <laughs> what next? And that's Which it. is why the culture is yeah. so focused, I believe, on dating scene. Yeah. Because that's what the movies are about. That's what the books are about. It's yeah. not about the marriage yeah. and the boring that yeah. comes with that from what people have shared with me. And do you find people are getting bored once they're entering that relationship? Like they're aching for it, they're desiring for it, it comes and boredom happens once it's here because the excitement is gone? I would say more m monotony of just the day-to-day. -day. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't necessarily say bored, yes. but life gets busy and whether yeah. it's kids or the job or their purpose or your careers. Yes. And it's important to just keep that flame alive. Yeah. But if people are addicted to drama, you're going to seek it out and create it. And you spoke about relationships being a curriculum. Yeah. Can you share more about what you mean for any woman that isn't resonating with the concept of curriculum or dojo or <laughs> ayahuasca and medicine? Yeah. If she's like, why is he, what do you mean this is my soul's curriculum? Tell us more about that because I agree with you. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, try I'm, gonna, I'm trying to articulate it in a different way for those people. You would believe, and I'm talking to everybody listening, you would believe that God gives you exactly what you need at any given moment. If you feel like our souls are here to learn and grow mm -hmm. or to experience and express mm -hmm. even more, then what better way to guide us closer to love, to closer to God and closer to ourselves than having reflections of what's not? If God is trying to get to you, he's going to pull at what's on your heart. So everybody listening to this probably got love in their heart, relationships on their mind. Other people, it might be money. For me in the past, it's been money. Had it, lost it all. Why? God wasn't in the picture. Yeah. God wanted my heart and I didn't have it. Money did. Mm -hmm. For the past, it's for me, it's been relationships as well. I would do anything for the woman that I was with and God wasn't in the picture. So it didn't work out. Oh, I see that now. And that's just my own belief in my relationship with God, Jesus, the divine, whatever you want to call it. And going back to the curriculum bit, and this is the work that I do with my clients, look back on all of your intimate relationships and all of your connections, mm -hmm. who you were before, who you were after, what were they there to teach you empowering about yourself? And I think, you know, when relationships end, people are very quick to demonize the other person. And I'm very close with a lot of my exes still. And it's means so much to me and I got the role modeling from my dad shout out at his funeral there were like four of his exes there and I was like whoa and then I looked at my life and I was like whoa 
Interesting. It's like you loved that person. Why would you ever need to cut them out of your life? Unless there's been abuse and other things, obviously. Mm -hmm. But if it was just we didn't work out, you don't need to flip the script in order to get over them. Yeah. But looking back on all of it, look at the beauty of them. That's part of the beauty of you. If you can see what it is about them that you didn't like, that didn't work out, what does it say about you that you were attracted to it, that you stayed for that long, right? How can that reflect back maybe your self-worth or what you believe about love or what the game is that needs to be played in order to then have the relationship, right? Or what relationships look like to you. And a lot of us are enacting our past presently in relationships for a sake of redemption and we don't even realize it. Mm -hmm. And so this is a lot of the work that I do with clients is in like timeline retrieval. So we go back to your past, we clear things from your body, whether it's resentment or shame, or you locked up and you didn't speak up or your no wasn't respected, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And we clear that somatically from the body and bring you back into wholeness yourself in the present moment for a sake of redemption. And now all of a sudden what's for you changes, what you're attracted to changes because you're vibrating at a different frequency. But back to the curriculum bit, going back into your past and seeing all of the ways that your soul was shaped by the good and the bad, where you abandoned yourself are the opportunity to have the firm foundation of self. Because we can go back to parts where you've abandoned yourself, you've neglected your needs, whatever it is, and rebuild that sense of meeting your needs, sense of trust, whatever. You're literally building it from the place where it was ripped from you or where you gave it away. So now it, you can't lose it. It's like you ask God for peace and you get chaos mm -hmm. so that you can embody peace no matter what's happening. Mm -hmm. So go back to your past and all the ways you abandoned yourself and have that revival and retrieval. Now it's on firm foundation. It's not on just because I said an affirmation in the mirror. Yes. I was literally going to, I know you spoke about vibrating on a frequency. It's not here because you're not matched to it yet. Yeah. And I was going to ask, how do we become the match? And is that exactly it? It's getting clear on what it feels like mm -hmm. and uh, like really being in that picture and in that frame. And then who would that person be attracted to? Which is sometimes a very hard pill to swallow because you may not be a match for it yet. Yeah. And it may be very clear in your face. And then so that's then your like roadmap of things to do. And then instead of, okay, now I'm going to just work on becoming that person. Also cut the chains from your past. Because if you're trying to sprint forward and you got a thousand pounds weighted vest on, you're going to move slow. I'm under the belief of yes, move forward, but also take the chains off of the past. Look back on why you're not in your authenticity right now. And you may be thinking that you're authentic, but if you're pushing away love and you got high walls and super high standards that nobody can freaking reach, sorry to call people out. If you've got these things, it's not actually your most authentic self, your guarded self. And how can you again, open and trust and be in that space where I'm not going to control it. I have an idea of what I think I want. I know where I get to work on and growing into, and I'm going to work on becoming the best partner I absolutely can be. Yeah. How can you not manifest amazing love from that? Yeah. And then trusting that anything that does come your way is meant for you right now. I hear a lot of people and I've even had the experiences of, oh my God, like all these crazy synchronicities are happening and it's then things start going really fast and you're like, yeah. what is happening? Is this my person? Oh my gosh, you're getting all these signs that it's your person and then it doesn't work out. Happened to me recently. <laughs> <laughs> Stop talking about my life. <laughs> it's because that was your person for right then. Yeah. We tend to place forever on things and if we can trust that this tender like specialness of we don't know how long yeah. this will last. So let's really soak it up and let me pour my love into you and really give it all I've got because we don't know when we're going to die and we don't know if this is going to die. Yes. Or when it will. Yes. So we actually don't know how much time we have. Why wouldn't we just dive in and be ravished by love and yes. actually open our hearts? We can attach to it. Mm -hmm. Like I had an experience, I recorded a podcast about it of five certain people tell me this man's name. They were all separate. So then when I was coming back to Austin, I just knew that I had to connect with this man. I got him on my podcast. He didn't know that anyone had told me about him. He <laughs> oh. asked me out. We started okay. dating. The whole thing that happened. And so then I did a bufo ceremony. He was in my bufo Whoa. ceremony and like my visions. I was like, this man is obviously my husband. <laughs> like God wouldn't do this to me any for any other reason. And at the four and a half week mark, it went the opposite way. And I was like, what's happening? I was genuinely so excited to date someone for the first time in 11 years. Wow. I got to have that experience. Wow. I got to feel what it was like to just totally surrender in a grounded man's presence and actually open my heart to life. I got to have that experience. But my personality was like, no, why would God go to all of these steps 
just for it to stop at four and a half weeks. So you could open your heart. Yeah. Yeah. He knew what you wanted, but here's what you need first to, to get what you want. Yeah. Why do you think our personalities get so attached? Because I was like, all of that, God, for like, this had happened six months prior. I recorded someone yeah. on my podcast who was like, I met my husband because four people that didn't know each other all told me we should meet. And I was like, this just happened to me. And so when it didn't happen, I was like, why would God do that? And I you, see it now. But why do our personalities just get so attached? Confirmation <laughs> before you can open up your heart. Yeah. It's funny. I, I get it. I've been the same way. It's protection. Yeah. Because if not, we don't want to just be stupid and open all the time and get yeah. hurt and manipulated. But I think that's the illusion is that mm. it'll happen. And really, your ego is the only thing that can get hurt, in my opinion. Yes. You're never losing anything. Yeah. And that took me losing everything to realize that. Like suicide attempts, near death experiences, homeless on the street, multiple heartbreaks, getting to the point where I've lost everything is how I realized you can't lose everything. And then again, from that foundation, I was like, oh, wow, look at how abundant I am. And now I have more, but I, I don't have more. It what? looks like I have more things in life, but I'm just borrowing it all. Before I had a lot. Now I'm just being a good steward. I'm borrowing all, everything that I have. From who? God. I ain't taking it anywhere. This shirt is in my life for a season and then it won't be. These shoes, love them. They were somebody else's before. Got them at a thrift store. And then... They'll be somebody else's. And the same might be true with people. The same also might be true with maybe they will be your forever person until you pass. But that will then end because you passed. Yeah. Everything comes to an end. And I think if you can reckon with that and be with that and actually digest that, you get to fully open to the beauty of the present moment and the beauty of what is there now. Knowing then how do you show up? Like if you think about the person in your life right now that you love, and for those of you in a relationship, it's going to end. One of you might pass, y'all might break up. How would you kiss them when you saw them next? Mm. You know, and like the more that I can remind myself of that and the more mm. free I feel and the less shame and guilt and judgment that I'm wrestling with in my head. What do you end up most attached to? Right now in my life, it's people before it was money and things that I had because I was homeless before. So it gave me this sense of safety and homeless, not by choice, I should say. Yes. Now it's okay. I could lose it all again and sleep on the street. I'll be fine. I'll still be alive. That's not going to, that doesn't scare me anymore. Mm -hmm. Like it used to. When a woman is deeply attached to her partner, how does that impact the relationship? There's nothing wrong with being attached mm -hmm. is one I want to say first. Mm -hmm. It's human. If not, why be in a relationship? We need each other. Mm hmm it's all on a spectrum. And so if that is then too much for too long, then yeah, that might be something to look at, right? Mm -hmm. Your question was, what does it mean? Or what how it, would it impact the relationship? How would it impact yeah. the relationship? So women are wired for connection and men are wired for freedom mm -hmm. on a biological level. Yes. Freedom doesn't mean like fuck around and not being in a relationship. Freedom means his ability to choose isn't hampered. Mm -hmm. He's making the decisions mm -hmm. in his life. Mm -hmm. And for a woman, it's connection to other people. Mm -hmm. And that's biologically wired into y'all. Mm -hmm. And if we can honor that, then things run a lot smoother. If a woman is attached too much to their person, and I'm assuming you mean being codependent or needy, or what do you mean? Yeah, just even just your conversation around right now, what you're most attached to is people. Uh -huh. Just that same conversation. If I could love my partner but not suffocate him through my attachment of he makes me, he completes me, he fulfills me. Obviously, women desire partnership. Like I feel almost all of us desire our intimate partner. Yeah. But that almost uh, tight grip and suffocating energy on him of my life is great because he's here. And when he's not, or if we're fighting, or if he doesn't reply in X amount of time, then ineffective behaviors come out and it can start to impact the relationship probably in unhealthy ways. If the attachment turns to control, which is what you're talking or about. Or if the attachment is almost because I feel worthy and safe because he's here. Is he's just reminding you of how worthy and safe you are. He's just reminding you of that. And I've even had that in the flip side. Yeah. Women reminding me of how worthy I am or how like incredible I am because I forgot it. And so we need each other in that way. Yeah. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that, but it gets in the way when it turns into control. Yes. And control can look like freaking out if he hasn't texted you in a certain amount of time. Yes. And how you reply or respond to that, making him wrong and pointing out constantly what he's wrong for instead of what he's right for. Yeah. The way in which you open up 
opportunity for him to change? Are you opening a door or are you making him wrong and demanding that he steps up? There's a lot there. And again, Alison Armstrong, yeah, everybody tuning in, The Queen's Code, read the book. That'll tell you everything. So is this a foundation upon what you're built on, Alison Armstrong's work? She was the first person that I read about with masculine and feminine energy dynamics. So I I use a lot of her framing with it, but I'm deep in somatics. And so I'm also understanding the nervous system and nervous system association to intimacy. So it's a lot of the trauma healing side of it too. And redemption and clearing resentment and some of like that deeper work. But when it comes to just understanding partnership, yeah, yeah, I lean on Allison's work a lot. Yeah. And also Dr. Stan Tatkin, his yeah. work's really amazing. And when we do the nervous system work and the somatic work, how are you seeing it impact intimacy in a really beautiful way? Oh, you have your guard down and you're able to let it in. I have one-on-one client that just wrapped up and they didn't have in sex for five plus years. And they were wanting to work on it. And it was because she was locked up and she wanted to, but was scared. And they've been married for 30 years and had so much history. And both of them had cheated on each other at certain points. And they had opened it at certain points. And it was just, it was a mess. It was a ball, as she referred to it, just a ball of mess. And like, we want a new relationship with each other. Yeah. But how do you even start that? And so that we did some resentment clearing and then a lot with her on some of the redemption process that I was talking about. And it is night and day difference. Yeah. It's like they're in a new relationship. She's giddy, smiling every time on the call. When I see him, like they, he's lit up. And I'm like, man. And it, it's because they got to clear the energy of the past. Yeah. Not just in trying to build something new, which a lot of people go to. Yeah. Of let me learn some effective communication. And let me, let's do therapy and talk yeah. about how it makes us feel. Like when I'm talking resentment clearing, one person is in full receiver mode. And the other person's letting it fucking rip. Yeah. Any fuck yous, any how dare yous, and they're embodying their rage, their grief fully. Yes. When you can be it, bear witness to it, get it out of your system, throwing up in a way. You like process it yes. out and then all of a sudden you're clear. And then you're able to create new vows and a new vision together from a new place because you killed the old relationship. And you can't half-ass death. If you're going to die, if you're going to end things, you got to end it fully for something else to be born. Every inspirational couple that I know has had a death in their relationship. Yeah. Do you feel that women specifically, actually, I would say men, okay, I'm not even going to gender this in this (laughs) moment, fear the throwing up process, the saying, I'm going to stand in front of you, Kevin, and tell you every resentment that I've ever had in our entire relationship. And the reason that I haven't is because I just think it's going to hurt you. And so I've kept it in, I've kept it in, I've kept it in. I kept it in thinking I was doing the right thing, but it's created that that poison we were talking about. It's now become a poison within me. Yeah. And our intimacy doesn't exist between the two of us because I have all of this resentment about a thing I don't want to say because I don't want it to hurt you, but now I've got to say it. Totally. This can go wrong so many ways. Yes. So for everybody listening... Don't just get up and do this. Make sure you have some <laughs> Honey, support. I listened to a podcast today. I got some shit to tell you. That Sit will down. Go wrong. <laughs> Open body receiving position. <laughs> yeah. Bang, 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 and get an email next week. Yeah. So my relationship is over. I hate your podcast. <laughs> do not recommend. <laughs> don't do it. I'm not telling you, like, please don't do this unless you have proper guidance. So um, what you're saying is for this kind of energy clearing and this. You need a lot of ground rules set. facilitation agreements ground yes. rules yes both people need to be 100 percent in it's not we're gonna try this it's yeah let's fucking go yeah you know i'm gonna jump into the cage with you there needs to be a lot of understanding of again the rules it's literally like a boxing match there's yeah. rules to it and if you violate those rules it could really end up bad yes and when i do this with my clients i really set up those rules and the foundation for what that is yeah. i also check to make sure they're not just, yeah, I'm, I'm all, all in, but yeah. are they actually fucking all in? Yes. Because this is deep soul tie work. Like mm-hmm. you're unraveling a bunch of shit from the past. Yeah. And again, if you don't really have that proper context of, oh, I'm just holding space. This has nothing to do with me. I'm just letting it out. Yes. They'll take it personal and then it'll yeah. turn into a fight. And it, 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 that's why people hold it in because they don't yeah. want to fight. I know with my ex, we did it in repair. But at the time, I didn't want to make him wrong. I didn't want to shame him. Mm -hmm. He was already stressed. So I had so many stories of why I wouldn't say the things that needed to be said. That was the demise of the relationship. What I wasn't willing to say was the reason that we split. So I really had my lesson in that is whatever I'm trying to save through not using my voice, I lose anyway. And then for any woman listening right now that is, okay, I hear that if you're in relationship, but I have all of these resentments towards a past partner and they're not clear. I do want partnership. Do I call him and say, hey, do, will you have this ceremony with me? Do I write him a letter? What would you say for that woman that really does want to clear? 
And maybe there's a part of her that wants her voice to be heard by that man. What would you say to her? There's a lot of nuance to this. Yes. So it's hard to generalize. My go-to is not to reach out to the person. This is right. something that you would do for yourself, by yourself, yes. get the energy out of your body. Yes. This has nothing to do with proving you right and yeah. he needs to hear this and all this stuff. Yeah. Like That doesn't need to happen. So in that regard, it's just literally closing your eyes and imagining the person's in front of you. Let it rip. Yeah. There's a difference between just cathartically releasing and clearing something from your past. Yes. And I've found that works the best. And sometimes, it's it, again, it's important to do this with a practitioner or, or a coach or somebody because you might get in your patterns of locking up or yes. whatever. And they're going to able to help you navigate through all of the stuff that might come up. Yeah. Because it's important to actually reach a full let yeah. go. I love that you've said that because I know for years and I know a lot of women will resonate with this. I wanted to do it with him, with that past ex. I wanted the apology. Like I need him mm -hmm. to say sorry for the things that he did. And I've got clients that are in that experience right now where they're like, I just need him to own the pain that he's inflicted. And years later, when I finally got the apology, I thought that once I got the I'm sorry, it would just rid me, like it would just be <laughs> out of my body. And it was like, Whoop, I feel better now. And the sorry came. And I was like, I thought that entire time I needed him to hear it and I needed him to apologize and I'd just feel air quotes better. And he said the thing and it wasn't that. And what so was I, it? I had to forgive myself actually. I had to forgive myself. I was so fixated on blame and blaming him and blaming what he did or did not do or what he did or did not listen to or the needs that were or were not met. I was so fixated on him. And when he said, I fully understand why you feel that way and I did let you down and it wasn't it, I was like, fuck, Dang. it's me. I'm not mad at him and I was so distracted being so mad at him that I didn't actually look at how mad I was at myself. Yeah, listen, I was cheated on by my first three relationships. Mm. I know what the pain is like. Mm -hmm. I could have blamed and said all women are cheaters. Yes. And I didn't. I asked myself, what is it about me that's creating this? Because this is a pattern. Yes. That's what changed my life. That's yeah. what started me doing all this work that I do now. Yeah. And, and if you can just see it as that, Trust that nobody did anything wrong. You yeah. didn't do anything wrong. They didn't do anything wrong. It was exactly what your soul needed and their soul needed to yeah. grow. If you can just hold that frame, you're liberated from so much. And it's even if it's, yeah, but they did that thing and it was wrong. To your perspective, yes, but maybe that was because that was the only way you could get out of the relationship because yeah. it actually wasn't right for you. You wouldn't have been able to speak up and leave. Yeah. There's so many perspectives that you can see how that was actually perfect and what needed to happen. The only way that I would have ever left my ex fiance is if she cheated on me. Guess what? That's how it ended. And I didn't in the relationship. She did. I was so attached. I never would have left. I resonate so deeply. So like it, that's perfect that happened because thank God we weren't a match. I mean, my ex from 11 years ago, I broke up with him twice. I kept going back. <laughs> I had to cheat and get herpes to be like, there's no going back now. <laughs> oh God. God does not want this for me, but I wouldn't be doing this. I would yeah, not yeah. do the work that I do. I would not serve the women that I serve. I wouldn't have this message. It just wouldn't be who I am today without yeah. that had to happen. Like every single cell of my body is I would have married that man. Even in my bullshit codependent patterns and the ways that I used to shame myself for fucking up the relationships yeah. in the past, that was exactly what needed to happen for them yeah. to wake up from certain things. And I'm like, wow, so my codependency wasn't even wrong? It's a mind fuck, but that was so liberating for me to say, I have never fucked it up. Yeah. This was all a part of God's plan yeah. in some cosmic way. If I stay authentic to my soul, yeah. I can't fuck it up. That's so liberating. I love how you said that it's a pattern. I'm always thinking of my clients and the women in my community when I hear people speak and I just hear them being like, this is my pattern and I'm bad. But I love the way that you said it, the energetics of it felt like this is a pattern. This pattern is not serving me, but I'm not going to wrong myself or judge myself or shame myself for it. It's a pattern you're experiencing. It's not you. And if you identify as the soul, not your body, not your emotions, not your thoughts, you're a soul. Yeah. If you identify as a soul, the pattern that your human is in, all of a sudden it's so impersonal. Oh wow, Kevin's experiencing some attachment. Not like, oh my God, I'm so attached and here's the pattern again and how do I break it yeah. and I have oracle cards and, blah, and all the things. Like if you think it's you, it has the opportunity for shame to boil yes. up. If it's so impersonal and it's just, oh wow, interesting, that's what I'm experiencing right now. It's like, okay, cool. And again, that's the game. This is the lesson how, of how I untangle this so I can return closer to love. So I can free myself like that. This is the curriculum. That is the game. That attachment, that pattern, that's the fun part to dive into to free yourself. That is the way to freedom. You will find security. 
Like, <laughs> I don't I'm know. getting what you're putting down. I yeah. love it. Kevin, I have absolutely loved this conversation with you oh, today. You. If you could go back and give 18 year old Kevin a piece of advice on love, I've never asked a, a guest this question, but I feel Ooh. like it's uniquely for you. What would yeah. you say to him? I was in it with my ex fiance at the time. You know, I've been, I've been asked a similar question before. What would you tell your past self? Yeah. And I think I still have the same answer. It's been a while since I've been asked that question, but I would just pat him on the back and say, keep going, buddy. I don't want to change anything about my past. You're like, I'm not going to go back and save you. You get to have this experience. I would not be the man I am today if I didn't yeah. have my heart broken by that woman. If I didn't hold the pistol in my mouth. If I didn't go through what the fuck I went through. Yeah. I wouldn't be who I am. I'm yeah. grateful for all of it. I have zero regrets. That I was very attached back then and I didn't have a solid sense of self. And I was looking to women to save me from myself in a lot of ways. Yeah. Just chasing girls or her really. But yeah, I wouldn't really tell him much. He was doing his best. I love that. I've loved today with you. Thank, Thank you so you. much for sharing your heart with us. For any woman in my world who would love to get all the way up into yours, where do we find you? The heart guy on Instagram. Let's go. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you. Thank you.